Hello farmers and welcome to yet another installment of the Kenyan farmer. Today I want to talk about one of the many advantages of livestock keeping, farmyard manure. The quality of manure you get depends on many factors like the type of feed that you give to your animals. Livestock feeding on commercial feeds have manure that is quite different from the ones that feed on hay or just pastures. The type and the age of the animal also matters. Before I go too far, let me talk about the composting basics. There are generally two processes in composting of organic matter that I know of, aerobic and anaerobic processes. Anaerobic processes occurs in absence of oxygen. As a farmer, the only time I can think of when you utilize this process is when preserving silage or even fermenting milk and maybe in the biodigester. You know the process of biogas generation where organic matter is digested in an enclosed tank to produce methane, the flammable gas. The gas is collected in some big balloon for storage. This gas is used for various domestic activities like cooking, domestic heating of chicks in the brooder, and many other uses. At the end of the process, the organic matter left, commonly called bioslurry, is also used as organic fertilizer. Aerobic process, on the other hand, takes place in the presence of oxygen. And this process is my main attention in this video. The process has many byproducts, but my main aim is the humus formed at the end of the process. This humus is what I will use as a source of slow release organic fertilizer, what I simply call manure. There are two common ways of compost preparation methods that I have worked with. Pit method involves digging a shallow pit, then lining the bottom with the kind of crop material that does not compost easily, like straw, dry banana leaves, maize stover, or wood shavings. After this, you can fill it up with organic matter or cow dung. And once you are done, you can cover the heap with some leaves for some time to decompose. The other method, my favorite method, is the heap method. When it comes to heap method, you just place the organic matter on some farm corner and wait for the nature to take its course. The heap should not be more than one meter in height. You need aeration and also to avoid compaction always. Another thing is that it's advisable to put some form of roofing so as to provide a shade. Too much sunlight will not only reduce the moisture content, but too much heat can also cause loss of nutrients in gaseous form. The roof will also cover the heap from the rain. Rainfall can also cause leaching down of soluble nutrients like nitrates depending on the ground surface you have placed your compost. The runoff water from the rains can also wash away the nutrients, especially if the heap is placed on a sloppy land. Of course, you can be creative in controlling runoff around the heap by digging some trench or terrace. Another important concept I need to explain is the carbon to nitrogen ratio in organic matter. Once upon a time, my teacher explained this to me, but I didn't understand that much. The microorganisms responsible for composting need both carbon and nitrogen for the whole activity. These are essential for microbial cell growth and functioning. I will use this table that I've copied from this paper as a reference. The microorganisms responsible for composting maintain a ratio of 8 to 1 in their body. The ideal organic matter or food for this microorganism has a ratio of 24 to 1. That is the perfect meal 
for these organisms. From the 24 parts, 16 parts are used for respiration or energy generation, and the remaining 8 units remain in the microorganism's body for maintenance. The nutrients that are reserved in the microorganism's body can later be released to the crop when the microbes die. Now, the second case is when the compost heap is mostly fresh green vegetative material, maybe from mowing grass or lawn, or what you get after trimming your life fence, or even leguminous plant residue in the farm, like beans. These materials have lower carbon to nitrogen ratio, or I just say they have relatively more nitrogen. That heap will decompose very fast as the little carbon is quickly used up, leaving excess nitrogen to be used up by the crop. Easy come, easy go. By the way, this is the concept used to make the soup used in biofertilizers rich in nitrogen for vegetative growth in organic farming. Another case is when the compost heap is mainly dry woody plant material, wood shavings or sawdust, or even material made from wood like boxes or paper. For your information on papers, please don't use calendars or the kind of paper with too much color or pictures, nasty chemicals. This kind of heap will have relatively higher carbon to nitrogen ratio and it will take forever to decompose. That's the ideal kind of material to use as mulch, but not compost, I guess. In this case, we have too much carbon. Since more nitrogen is required for the perfect match or combination, then the nitrogen will have to be sourced elsewhere, maybe stolen from the reserve in the soil that is meant for the crop. And that's bad. It is like when the government officials go for unplanned expensive loans on behalf of you and me in the name of long-term development projects, yet my belly is empty. Something I have to say before I forget, the livestock urine is a very important ingredient in the mix. If your livestock structure doesn't have cemented floor for easy urine collection, then you can decide to apply some wood shavings on the floor to absorb the precious commodity. Besides the nitrogen in the urine, there is also many other dissolved nutrients. By the way, that's what makes it very useful in organic farming as a foliar feed. I hope you now understand the risk of applying manure that is not well composted directly into your vegetable farm. It may not supply the necessary nutrients when needed and may even lock up or hide what's available in the soil that's meant for the crop. And so there is a balance you want to achieve by mixing the various available materials in the compost. Just slightly above the perfect ratio is okay for humus production, say 30 to 1. Now, enough with the theory. Let's go to the field and have some fun. The heap method, my way of doing things. One of the ways I used to judge if the material is well composted, the first indicator is just looking at it. Just by looking at it, you should not easily tell that this is cow dung, dry leaves, straw, or even goat or rabbit droppings. It has dark, fine texture that you learn from experience. Do you know if manure is not well composted or you buy manure randomly by the roadside where you are not sure of the source or the processing, then you may introduce weed seeds or even bring some diseases in your farm. Imagine 
you buy manure made from deceased tomatoes or potatoes. You introduce it in your new expensive greenhouse just to have your tomato crop withering at flowering stage. I know that's a classic horror story to any tomato farmer, but it can happen. Of course, that can discourage any new farmer. And so, if possible, learn to do some composting all by yourself. Now, once I have identified the site to place the heap, I first start with a bottom layer of wood shavings or straw. Why I do this is because I assume any liquid material like urine from the top layers can be captured or harnessed by the bottom layer. Well, for the proof of concept that I leave to the scholars, this is just how I do it. The material also has good aeration. I get this waste from the chicken project. You know the beddings that you place on the floor of the brooder or laying boxes? Yeah, that's it. All the waste I will be using is sourced from the farm. Nothing is bought from outside. If that's your area of interest, check out my brooder sanitation video. You will learn something good, I hope. Once I am done with the spreading, I then put a layer of cow dung on top. For this layer, a thickness of about half a foot will work for me. Now, there are some few items that I failed to mention that you should not include in your compost recipe. You should not add material that will not decay. I know that's common sense, but I will mention it nevertheless. I mean stuff like plastics, glass, rubber, or even metals, and sometimes even bones. Don't include any of these. Other animal products like meat, hides, or dairy products should not also be included. Else, you will end up with bad odor or smell from your compost and flies everywhere. Those are simply biohazards. Did I also talk about paper with pictures or too much ink or printed magazines? I think I did. After that layer, I apply another layer of dry material, like dry tree leaves. I am sure in the farm, you have big trees that shed too much leaves, like avocado or mango. Some trees, like macadamia, also shed leaves, although the leaves are quite tough, I must say. That takes more time to decay, but eventually do. You have to ensure that you spread the material evenly from time to time. Speaking of material, the other day the government banned the use of plastic bags, something that I think is one of the best things that have happened to us since independence. Now, the only thing left, I think, is for the NEMA guys to keep working on that. Not just to start shouting when the rivers are filled with plastics, or our livestock bellies are filled with plastic balls. Consistency matters, because old habits die hard. You know, you may think some basic concepts, like separation of waste before disposal, comes as obvious to every person, but you may be wrong. Have you ever boarded a matatu traveling somewhere in Kenya? Then the guy seated in front of you, dressed in a suit, looking sharp, civilized and all, decides to toss an empty soda bottle or a yogurt can outside the window? You then realize, at times, looks are deceiving. At times, I think that wisdom and education may be in different lanes. It's okay to have both, but it's tragic to lack wisdom. Remember the wise men who followed the star to meet the king? Those guys knew the side of the bread that was buttered. I think they even took a different route to go back from where they came from. I always pray God to give me wisdom like those guys, or Solomon, or even better.
At this point, I have decided to spray some water on the heap before adding the last layer. Just in case I didn't mention, moisture is crucial for microbial action. I am using this because the cow dung and the materials being used are quite dry. Your situation may be different and you may not need to do this. And it's not too much water to run or saturate the material because you still need that oxygen that is also crucial. With experience, you will know how to tune up your compost heap. The height of the compost heap should not be more than one meter, as I hinted earlier. Once you are done, it's good to cover it. I will use this piece of tapulin to do this. You can also use banana leaves to do this if available. In fact, I would recommend you mulch with a layer of banana leaves or dry grass. With that kind of material, then aeration is guaranteed. Now, this is not the end of the story. It's actually the beginning of another phase. This whole process will last for about five to six months, and I like turning the heap after every 15 days. Turning the heap involves moving the heap to adjacent space with a spade. By doing this, I hope you see how the bottom material ends up on top after each turning. Normally, in the first week, you'll start noticing a gradual rise in temperature in the heap. This heat is an indicator of microbial activities. It shows you that something is cooking. You can use this temperature indicator to understand how the composting process is going on. To once the six months, the temperature will have reduced. Most microbial activities will have subsided and the manure will be ready. I hope you have learned something today. Remember to like, share and subscribe. Consider supporting via the link on the description of this video. May God bless you and see you in the next presentation.